Yeah, my favorite experience of my mission was um, about two weeks before I came home and I was on a kind of exchange with Elder Wilson, uh, still still a friend of mine today, and we were, I was talking to him, I was like, you know, Elder Wilson, it'd be really cool if I could teach in another church before I go home. And for some reason, it just never occurred to me, the idea of getting to preach in another church. Like, but at the end of the mission, it suddenly did. It was like, you should go to teach in another church. And maybe it was an inspired desire. I mean, I, I never really thought of it that way on the mission, but looking back, because I just, it was never on my mind the rest of my time there, but it was suddenly we were talking about it and he's like yeah wouldn't that be cool you know it's just you have your wish list before you go home what you want to do and so then about that was like a Tuesday or Thursday or something Sunday Sunday afternoon um, Elder Sessions and I and my companion we were after uh, church and we get a call from Elder Wilson and he said, hey, we just talked because they're, you know, another area. So we just talked to um, this guy who goes to his church and he said they have guest pastors. You can come preach at their church. And I was like, no way. That's so cool. When can I go? He's like, uh, in like two hours. <laughs> it's like, right. <laughs> okay. So, you know, you hear the stories about like no preparation, you know, speak by the spirit, um, you know, treasure up in your mind. So, I mean, it's literally, I think it was at four o'clock when we got that call. So, older sessions and I are kind of sitting there and it's like, man, we ought to go home, you know, because it was a really hot day. And so, we, you know, we didn't have our suit jackets, but we're thinking maybe we should be, you know, fully you know, dressed up all the way if we're going to go be a guest, you know, preacher. And, but then we looked at, and we just realized we didn't have time because we didn't have a car. We shared a car with other missionaries in that area. So, we didn't have a car. We just had our bikes. So, and with the distance to the church, we just had to go straight there. So basically, we got the call saying, hey, do you want to come, you know, teach this other church? And then we had to go straight to it. And um, I showed up. We had about a half an hour before the church was going to start. And so I remember we sat outside the church, and I pulled out index cards. And I started making notes. <laughs> it's like, all right, what do you teach, you know, when you're here at another church? And uh, anyway, so then we came into the church, and we sat in the back. And the first about 20 to 30 minutes of the church, we actually didn't meet anybody before the service. We just sat down. But I think, oh, no, 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 sorry. We had called. That's right. So after we got the call from Elder Wilson, I called the number that he gave us. It turned out to be the pastor of that church. Now, I will tell you verbatim what the pastor said to me is he said, yes, you're welcome to come to our church. But then he said, quote, my people don't believe in the same Jesus as your people. And I just want you to be aware of that. <laughs> and I was like... Okay, <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Thank you. But he's like, but oh no, but he said, but my people are educated, so you're welcome to come. That's right. That That is a direct quote what he said. My people are educated. This was five pages of my journal the next day, five pages after this experience. Um, it was, anyway. So we got there. So we talked to the reverends. We showed up, sat in the back of the church. Well, he starts, and this, this particular reverend was a very accomplished jazz musician. So he sits down at the organ, and he starts playing and you know singing. He talked about himself in third person, though, all the time. Like he was kind of setting himself up as, you know, reverend... Reverend Johnson, I don't remember his name, but you know, Reverend Johnson says, you know, read the word. Reverend Johnson says this. And so he was a very, a very, um, maybe bombastic, you know, very uh, dynamic preacher. Anyway, so we sang jazz music out of uh, the hymn, hymnal, but it was all jazz with, with them. And then after about 20 minutes, he got up and he said, we've got two visitors, you know, two brothers that are here to visit us. And, and he introduced us. And then he proceeded to give a lengthy, about 10 minute anti-Mormon discussion to his congregation and it was so bad that by the time he finished and he finished with if you still want to why don't you come on down and tell us about your church um, that may not be verbatim but that was that was exactly what he was saying the congregation laughed us up to the pulpit so this was like this was like out of you know the olden days it was awesome and thankful i mean elder sessions and i we were just like oh it's so cool and i told her wilson and he was like i'm so glad we weren't there he's like we would have been so mad <laughs> he's like we would have gone up and, you know by the scriptures like just you know throwing them down and stuff but elder sessions and i were just sitting there we're like all right we're here at another church we get to preach this is great he'd been out for like three weeks he was brand new missionary i was about to go home i was pretty confident i could handle anything anyway so here's where it gets good though so as i I was sitting there I noticed they had a grand piano in the front of this church this grand piano 
Um, and of course, I'm a pianist, and I had was already you know a concert artist more or less before the mission. And so when I got up, I said, "Elder Sessions, you introduce us for you know two three minutes, and then I'll take it from there. I'll I'll give a, an address." So Elder Sessions introduced us and told kind of our background. And then um, I got up, and after he introduced us, I said, "Reverend, would it be all right if we started with a musical, you know, with a song?" And go right ahead. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I went over to the piano and I busted out to date the best version I have ever played of Battle Hymn of the Republic in a full jazz version. Just blues, gospel, rocking it out. I started playing that on the piano. Within about 10 seconds, up gets this kid in the congregation, comes up to the front, and sits down and starts playing the tambourine with me. So he's a tambourine player. And then another kid gets up, sits down on another drum or something, start playing along. And then finally, after a few more seconds, the reverend gets up and goes back to the organ, and he just by ear starts playing along with me to battle him with the Republic. So we just have this like three minute jam session, just a jazz jam session on battle him with the Republic, and the congregation, I, when we finish the song, I get up there and I stand at the podium. I look out to a sea of smiling faces. And I, it was literally, it was incredible. It was a 180 degree shift in that congregation from laughing at us, mocking, and kind of hating on us a little bit too because of some of the you know rhetoric that that reverend had used to try to incite them against us. And just a simple thing of a musical number that was, you know, by the spirit, and in that sense, it was it was jazz music. It was what they connected to. It was what would draw them, what how they worshipped, and it was just amazing. And so, as I proceeded to talk about the Book of Mormon and about Christ coming to America, and you know, believing in prophets today, and I'm just seeing these nods and smiles from everyone in the congregation. <laughs> it, was, it was just it was amazing, and. You know, I wish I could say that we, we had a baptismal service on the spot, baptized everybody there. Um, but, you know, that, that wasn't, that wasn't the, the after. But, you know, I do think that everybody was impacted by it. And it, um, I remember later that week as we were, dry, as we were biking along, um, somebody from um, the church passed us and honked and Elder Sessions, I guess, noticed, oh, that was one of the people that was in the congregation. You know, they were excited to see us. And we got a lot of hugs from people after, which, again, I guess, I don't know if there's a rule against missionaries hugging, but they're, everyone was giving us hugs, you know, after the, the service. And I was really impressed by the fact that even the Reverend never interrupted the talk. And afterwards, um, I remember writing about that in my journal and thinking about it a year or two later that I was thinking back about the experience. I've shared it with people because with his personality, I'm really surprised he wouldn't have interrupted us. But I think, you know, that I, I wonder if there was a time on my mission when, you know, someone's tongue was bound, if you will, or, or they were just said, you know, do not interrupt if that was it. Or, you know, could it have been that or could it have been that his heart was touched too by the music. And so he was willing to let us speak and to let us have, you know, our, our word. And, and when we finished, you know, I mean, it was just he, he, um, you know, he had a few more things to say and he kind of tried to get back into some of his rhetoric, but you know, the, the, the bite wasn't there like it had been able to be before because of the spirit that was there and the, the love that these people felt for us and, and vice versa because of that music. And, you know, it wouldn't have been appropriate in, in his congregation for us to, you know, hey, everybody let's set appointments, you know, to come teach you kind of a thing. You know, we were invited guests in, in his church, but it was really a neat, I mean, it was, it was my most memorable experience of my my mission to see how music, how that gift could could change hearts and to see how literally an entire congregation, you know, it was, a, it was a small congregation, but how a congregation's heart could change through a simple thing like that and go from, you know, just this very negative attitude to a very positive attitude and very receptive. So yeah, that's, and you know, that's continued to drive some of my goals today. So